Hi. Now in this video, I want to introduce you to the inverse hyperbolic functions and their corresponding graphs. And in order to do this, I'm assuming that you're familiar with the graphs of the hyperbolic functions shine x, cosh x, than x, and the reciprocal functions, which are cosh x, sech x, and cosh x, respectively. Now, before we look at the inverse hyperbolic functions, I just need to run through a few points with you. And the first of these points is that if f of x equals shine x, the inverse function, f with a little minus 1 here, is written as ar shine x. Sometimes you'll see it written like this, shine with a little minus 1 up here and then the x. And you often hear different pronunciations of this particular function. I'm going to just stick to the inverse shine of x. I feel that's a lot easier to understand. So we'll talk about the inverse cosh of x and inverse than of x and so on. So that's one point. The next point I want to go over is that the inverse of a function is defined only if the function is one to one. So we'll be looking at that, and the final point I want to look at is that the inverse of a function is a reflection of the function in the line y equals x. So these points then are the three points we'll be using. So first of all then, when it comes to trying to work out the inverse of shine x, what its graph would look like, I can see that this particular graph already is one-to-one. -one. In other words, I can see that for any value of x in the domain here, there corresponds just one value of y in the range. And I can also see that if I take any value of y in the range here, there corresponds one value of x here in the domain. And it works if we take a value of y that is negative. You can see that we get just one value of x here in the domain. So clearly this is a one-to-one -one function. And that means that the inverse of y equals shine x will be a reflection in the line y equals x. So if I draw the line y equals x in, okay, now all I need to do is reflect this graph in the line y equals x, and that will give me this graph here. The inverse shine of x then. Now you'll notice I've written here the domain of this function. You can see that it's defined for all real numbers. Okay, well I'm going to repeat this kind of idea now for each one of these particular functions. And we'll run through the inverse of cosh x, because it's a special one. But then I'm going to give you the opportunity of pausing the video and trying to work out what you think the inverse functions of these, what their graphs are going to look like as we proceed through the tutorial. So going back to y equals cosh x, this is a special one. Because if it's to have an inverse function defined, it's got to be one-to-one. -one. Now I can see that for any value of x in the domain, there corresponds one value of y in the range. But when we work the other way, if I take, say, the value of y, say, being 3, for instance, you can see that I get a value of x in the domain here, but I also get a corresponding value of x over here. So it's not one-to-one. -one. So what we do is we just define a new domain for y equals cosh x when we're looking at the inverse of cosh x. We look at a domain that is values of x greater than or equal to zero. So in other words, we get rid of the left half of the graph. So we get something looking like this. Now what I'm going to do is just push this graph over to the left a little bit more. So if we do that, you can see 
that y equals cosh x then is defined for all values of x greater than or equal to zero. Now I'm going to draw in the line y equals x and reflect this graph in y equals x to give us the inverse cosh of x. And you'll notice this time the domain is x is greater than or equal to 1, stretching from 1 onwards. That's because when we considered the right hand side of the graph y equals cosh x, it started at 1 when x was 0. So reflecting this point over to here means that the inverse cosh of x starts from 1 and is valued for values of x greater than or equal to 1. OK, well, I did say that I'd encourage you now to have a go at trying to work out what the inverse functions would be for these ones that we've got here. So we'll start now with y equals than x. Just to recap, though, remember that y equals than x had asymptotes at y equals minus 1 and y equals 1. So do have a go at trying to think about what the inverse of than x would look like. Just give you a moment then to pause the video. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Now for this graph, we can see that it is 1 to 1 already. If I take one value of y, let's say this value here, you can see that if we go across, you just get one value of x, say there. If I take a negative value for y, like that one, I get one value of x there. So it's going to be 1 to 1. So all we need to do is draw the line y equals x in and reflect the graph of y equals than x in that line. And what you get? is this. And as for the domain, because we had asymptotes for than x at y equals minus 1 and y equals 1, when you reflect these in y equals x, you get now new asymptotes, which are x equals minus 1 and x equals 1. So the graph then is going to go in between those asymptotes. Now we move on to y equals cosh x. So again, might like to pause the video, have a go at trying to sketch the inverse function for this. OK, welcome back then, if you had a go. So is this graph 1 to 1? Well, it is. For any value of y, you can see that if I take that value, I've got one value of x in the domain there. And if I take that value of y, you can see I've got one value. So already it's 1 to 1. So draw in the line y equals x. Reflect the graph of y equals cosh x in the y equals x. And what you get tends to be almost much the same. Note that the domain here is x is not equal to 0. That's because the original graph of y equals cosh x never crossed the x-axis. That was an asymptote. So when you reflect that, you get the y-axis. So the curve never crosses the y-axis. So x can never equal 0. OK, moving on now. Let's have a look at y equals set x. Now, I'd strongly encourage you to have a go at this one. So I'll give you a moment to pause the video and uh, try and sketch that. OK, welcome back then if you had a go at this one. Now, for this one, do notice that if I take a value for y, we get, say, one value of x there, but we also get another value of x there. So this one is not a one-to-one -one function as it stands. So what we've got to do is limit the domain of y equals set x in order to find the inverse function for set x.
So we limit it just like we did for cosh x. That is, we consider the right-hand half of the graph. So if I do that, the graph is going to look like this. For values of x greater than or equal to 0. Now before we move on, what I want to do is just move the y-axis across. So if we do that, we've got that. And you can see the graph tends clearly towards the x-axis. It never crosses it. And it crosses the y-axis here at 1. So if I reflect this graph in y equals x, drawing y equals x in, and reflecting it gives us this graph. A graph that never crosses the y-axis and only goes as far as the 1. So for the domain of the inverse set of x, it's going to be x is greater than 0 but less than or equal to 1. Now one more to go. y equals cos x. We now need to try and work with sketching the inverse cos of x. So again, just give you a moment there to pause the video. And when you come back, we'll run through that one. Okay, welcome back then, if you had a go. Now with this one, it is already 1 to 1. I can see that for any y value there, I've got one value of x. And if I take a negative value of y, I've got one value of x there. So again, just sketch in the line y equals x and mirror this graph in that line. Remember, at the moment, for y equals cos x, there were asymptotes. There were y equals 1 and y equals minus 1. So when we reflect this graph then in y equals x, we get this. The inverse cos of x then. And as for the domain, those asymptotes, which were at y equals 1 and y equals minus 1, have now been reflected and we end up with asymptote at x equals 1 and x equals minus 1. So the graph then of the inverse cos of x has a domain where the x values are less than minus 1 or x is greater than 1. So I hope you've been able to follow my workings there and if you had a go at sketching the graphs that you were able to get them correct. And if not, you've at least been able to see where you might have gone wrong. So that brings us now anyway to the end of this tutorial and we'll be using these graphs in later videos. So I certainly would encourage you to learn them.